Hey, Kerry here. It's December the 18th and we're winding up uh, the year and moving towards the Christmas season. In our household, my wife pretty much takes care of uh, Christmas presents and particularly for those three in the thumbnail, that's, those are my grandchildren. Um, I have uh, a 13 year old, a 16 year old and a 19 year old. Um, so she buys all their presents and I was thinking what might I be able to give them for Christmas and I think the thing I enjoy giving more than anything else is uh, knowledge and advice and my opinion. Uh, so I've kind of built this video around a question I received from IVR424. Don't know who he or she is, but they identified themselves as a 24 year old. They had watched my video on quantum computing and 5G and basically ask me what were the companies I would invest in if I were a 24 year old and my mind went immediately back to uh, 1970s that's when I was a 24 year old at the time I was working for a corporation by the name of Polaroid Corporation and uh, our biggest competition at that time was Eastman Kodak and both of them were part of what is called the Nifty 50 um, really hot stocks, uh, 50 of the hottest stocks uh, uh, at the time. As it is, both of them have filed bankruptcy or are out of business. So my thoughts then went to, okay, what were the, the nifty 50? It's broken down into the cheap nifty 50 stocks and the expensive nifty 50 stocks. And you'll notice some of them and are that you recognize at this time, like, um, for uh, Philip Morris and um, Pfizer, uh, Pepsi, IBM, those were the cheap ones. The expensive ones were uh, McDonald's, uh, Walt Disney, Coca-Cola, Eli Lilly, Merck. Those are all companies that we're familiar with today. Um, but I want you to notice what their 40 year and 30 year returns were. Nothing really outstanding. Would I recommend any of them to my grandchildren as stocks to purchase in 2020 and beyond? I don't think so. I don't think that's, um, that's where things are. I also then reflected on how is it Polaroid and Eastman Kodak both went bankrupt when they were really the technological leaders at that time. And what I realized, and as I've researched, I realized they stayed in their wheelhouse. In fact, in 1978, um, Eastman Kodak Board of Directors was presented the first digital camera. It was the size of a toaster. The board said, no, we're really not interested. Fellow, remember, we're a chemical and paper company. Well, you know what happened to Eastman Kodak and, and uh, film photography and how they basically ignored what would put them out of business some probably 30 years later. So I, I thought of those and, and, and I looked at it and I thought, that's not who I'd want to invest in today. So then I went to Morningstar and I ask for the companies that have given you the greatest return in the last 10 years. Number one was Netflix. That didn't really surprise me um, in the cable and satellite and TV streaming business. Over the last 10 years, you would have, if you bought it 10 years ago, you would have had a 3,767% return. That's pretty outstanding. Uh, the next one was market access holdings. I really wasn't familiar with them and they're an investment banker and broker. And here are the others. And, and you can see they're medical specialty companies, aerospace, uh, semiconductors, Broadcom I'm familiar with, and, um, and again, a medical specialty companies. So again, those weren't the companies that I would have focused on. My focus would have been on, uh, if you just ask me, uh, flat out, I would have said Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, and Netflix. So with that, I said, well, let's look a little bit deeper and bring it down even into a shorter time frame and look at it for five years. So I want to take you to a website that I use called tradingview.com. It's a free website and I use it to uh, watch daily um, the stocks that I own and the stocks that I'm interested in. And also it gives me the ability to do some research that we're gonna go through on some of these stocks and get a better understanding of what exactly is going to happen 
what I think is going to happen in the next five years. And this would be the advice that I would be passing on to my three grandchildren buy these stocks. Okay, this is tradingview.com and the stock we're looking at right here is the number one performer over the last 10 years and that's Netflix. Um, and what you're seeing here is I'm, I'm starting with it back in it says um, in 2010 and you can see Netflix really took off in uh, 2015 and then has had this dip. They're actually they got as high as a return of uh, 2,800 uh, percent and where they're trading today um, they're up about 2,240 and that's not that's not bad. Why this dip right here? Um, I, I don't really follow, follow Netflix all that much but I do watch TV and I, and I do do streaming. I think they've gotten some competition and uh, and I think the rec market has recognized this. Heck, they're, they're, they're now competing with people like Amazon, uh, Google with YouTube uh, TV and, and Disney. And so they came in and captured the market and um, now they're having a fight for ownership. So would I buy Netflix? No, I wouldn't because I think they're in a really uh, a diminishing market. I think that they are going to put the networks out of business, but I have a suspicion that someone's going to come up behind them and and do the same thing to them. So that's Netflix. Now this is um, Transdem Group, and they're in aerospace and defense. Uh, it would appear to me that they have gained some fantastic contracts and uh, I don't personally know enough about this business but I can share with you that I'm going to learn something about it uh, in the very near future. This is a, a stock as I say its ticker is TDG that's their five uh, year performance if we pull it out further you can see they apparently they started somewhere in 07 or 06 and they've just been on a rocket ship uh, and that's interesting that's the business they're in um, going forward so <clears throat> after I would do some research uh, and see what exactly has driven this I would certainly consider this as a stock of the future particularly if they're involved in, in some use and will make their future better through quantum computing. This is Amazon. And this is Amazon in uh, the last five years. And let me get this out of the way. Um, as you can see, it is up. Uh, it has been up as high as in five years, 703%. Um, it's currently up roughly 600%. I, I happen to own this stock because I believe in it very, very strongly. And Amazon stock moves basically on its quarterly reports and the uh, projections that Jeff Bezos comes out with. And, and Jeff doesn't lie. He is not motivated by stock price. Jeff basically is motivated in building the largest company in the world and owning it. So... Um, I he's, he's, he's extremely arrogant he's extremely smart um, this, this little bump right here is basically come up as he, he basically told FedEx um, we're, we're moving away from you and we're going to do our own deliveries um, so to my grandchildren save up one thousand seven hundred eighty six dollars and thirteen cents and buy one share and then when you get another one thousand seven hundred and eighty six dollars buy a second share this is what you're going to retire on um, 50 years from now another data grabber and again these charts are somewhat deceptive um, this is showing um, Google in the last uh, let's get it for five years and it's up 158%. Um, that's not outstanding, really, 
when you when you compare it to some of the others. But as I say, Google is is gathering data. Um, they're buying companies to get more data. They they own the field that they play in. They own internet search, and this is just a steady climb. Uh, again, one thousand three hundred and fifty six dollars is not peanuts, but again, if it is going to go up, um, in well, let's see, what has it gone up in the last year? If we still go down to twenty nineteen and start there. Uh, that's about right. In the last year, it's up about 30%. I'll take that any day. And I, I would project that'll be uh, kind of the path they're on. Let's compare that to, to uh, um, actually, uh, Amazon in the last year is up 4%. So uh, now would be a good time to buy Amazon. This is a five-year chart of Apple showing they're up 100 and 153 percent and and you can see this is where I, I do a lot of graphing and um, you can see right here was the time to buy when they broke their trend line and uh, I draw a trend line um, going back as far as I can and that's when they've they, they broke the trend line now I don't own Apple stock at this point I sold it uh, about right there and um, at about, uh, well, I don't know what the problem is right there. The price was somewhere around uh, $223. It's now up to um, $279. I'll buy it again when it comes down and crosses this line down here. And that's how I buy and sell stocks. But Apple, yeah, this is, this is something you want to be involved in. Microsoft is another company. And this is a very interesting chart. This is a five-year chart. It's showing it up 240%. But I want you to see a 10-year chart on, um, on, on, on Microsoft. And let's even go back further. Microsoft died there for a while. Um, as you can see, back in 2000, Microsoft was king. They were way up. And then they took a bad turn. Now, what happened here that, that changed Microsoft? Microsoft started getting into cloud computing. And they were recognized back in uh, roughly 2015 as one of the major players in cloud computing. Um, and you can see what happened. Cloud computing is where they gather and they sort and they itemize your data. So that's why Microsoft is where it is. Would I buy it? You bet I'd buy it. Okay, that's to my grandkid, not to you. IBM, IBM was one of the nifty 50. IBM, IBM was one of the nifty 50. Let's look at an IBM. IBM's had, IBM doesn't have an identity. If I ask you today, what does IBM do? You would say, well, I think they used to make computers. I don't make computers. So what does IBM do? I don't think anybody's real sure. Um, I know they have now got into quantum computers. This is a stock I'd watch. Would I buy it right now? No, I wouldn't. Because I don't think the market knows who IBM is. This is Facebook. Okay, Facebook in the last five years is up 163%. This is Facebook's Achilles heel. Facebook's Achilles heel is you. And that's because you produce Facebook's content and you get Facebook in a lot of trouble. What do I mean by that? You, and it may not be particularly you, put fake ads and fake information and, and bad information on, on, on uh, Facebook. So Facebook doesn't have control 
of its business. I will never buy Facebook again. I used to own it. I sold it back in here. Uh, and I sold it back in here because my grandkids, I was with them, and they told me it was irrelevant, that they didn't use it. They had no interest in it, that it was something for my generation. And I came home and sold it. And I'm glad I did, because then Mark Zuckerberg got pulled in front of Congress. And now we're going into the 2020 election, and Mark's going to be hammered. He is going to be raked over the coals for what you, and I don't mean you specifically, but you, the nine million people who post on his website to play with other people's minds. Facebook will be replaced, and I don't know with what, but I won't buy Facebook. It, it's, it's a darling stock, but I won't buy it because of you. Number one is, I think, the future, and when I speak of the future, I'm talking the next five to ten years, is going to be driven by data. And so I'm looking at who is collecting the most data and what are they potentially going to do with it. So I'm asking my questions, myself questions like this. Why has Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook been spending so much time on developing voice activated operating systems to get into your home? Why are they doing that? Second, why did Google buy Fitbit? I think I know why. Again, they want data. They want health data. They've got all my search data. They want health data because they're going to lead that silo of data pro pro uh, provision to you and I in the future. Why is Amazon getting into real estate? Again, because they want to get Alexa in my house to gather my data that I'm generating by the voice uh, operating system as well as the 5G that's going to be in all of my appliances, in my pantry, in, in, in my refrigerator, my dishwasher, my, everything. They're going to be part of the internet of everything. So that's why Amazon got into real estate. So as the house is changing hands, they're in a position to update it into a Amazon smart home. Asking an interesting question, this dawned on me. When was the last time I raised the hood of my car to find out what was going on? When was the last time I checked my tire pressure? Not since I've got the car I've got. Uh, it's, a 19, it's a 2016 BMW, and that car does all that stuff for me because it's a smart car and all that data is going into the cloud. And who owns the cloud? We'll get to that. When was the last time you used a map? <laughs> you, got, you use your GPS, and that goes into the cloud. And that's part of the data that someone and everyone is collecting on you. How is 5G and the Internet of Everything going to affect your life? Well, it's going to give those data collectors more tools by which to monitor and to feed information back to you that will actually benefit you and make give you a better life. Why has Google, IBM, and Amazon gotten, gotten into quantum computing and cloud uh, computing? Again, it's data. And so, as I look, if this is what they're doing, and if I believe, as I believe, that that is the oil, that is the gold, that is the driving force of all economies in the future, then I want to invest in the companies that are getting this data, particularly over the next five to 10 years. If this isn't all making sense, I really ask you, to watch my prior videos, specifically on those of investing in the changing world order. There, this will be the third one in that. And then I did one on uh, quantum computing. Watch that as well. In fact, I'll put links to 
at least two of them at the end of this video so that you know where to go. And then this picture will all come better together for you. The other thing you need to understand is the changing di uh, demographic. Uh, that's the first video I did on the changing world order. It deals with the changing dem de demographic, particularly in the case of China. Remember that China had a one-child policy from 1975 to 2015. So if you look at their demographic chart, they got a real problem coming. Also remember from my prior video, all the debt they're carrying in order to finance the growth that they felt they needed to the Western civilization. They overbuilt, they overspent, they have some issues. With the other changes in technology of 3D printing, quantum computing, robotics, artificial intelligence, we don't need people near like we used to. And that's what China and India have. They have people. They have cheap labor. When we introduce robotics, when we introduce 3D printing, quantum computing, uh, cloud computing, we don't need those people like we used to. So the manufacturing will come home and these companies I'm talking about are going to control the future of all our commodity uh, economies. So that's who you need to invest in. I want to make a statement that I think is so important. You need to read. In my description, I have a suggested reading list. Look at it, click on those, and if you truly want to be ahead of this game, read these books. Read them, understand them, and become knowledgeable in the subject that you really want to be knowledgeable in, and as that is how to become wealthy. Now, like my grandchildren, you're probably going to say, but Poppy, all these stocks you're recommending are so expensive. They're 200, they're, they're 1700, they're $1,600 a share. Well, you get what you pay for. And they don't want speculators in their stocks. They want investors. They aren't penny stocks. Penny stocks are stocks that sell for what they're worth. That's going to happen again. And it may be in those same stocks, but there's a good chance it isn't. So you got to pay attention. So, okay, that's my gift to my grandchildren and to my loyal YouTube audience. I got a very wonderful uh, comment the other day from a fellow in Texas. And, and he said, I just don't understand. He said, this is one of the best YouTube channels on YouTube and it's got very little following. Well, I really appreciate that. That warmed my heart and I wrote him and told him. You got to understand YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google and Google's in the business to make money. Uh, at this point, I make YouTube and Google nothing because my website is not monetized. My website cannot be monetized until I get over 1,000 viewers, or excuse me, 1,000 subscribers, and I have been watched over 4,000 hours in the preceding 365 days. That's going to happen in January, and I will be monetized more than likely by February. At that time, I'm a continuing revenue source for uh, YouTube. My viewing time is above average. My click rate when they promote my video on their watch um, or their, their search, their browse, and their suggested videos is above average. So my website will take off. But in the meantime, you can help me. And that is by sharing the URLs of my videos that you watch with your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and your email friends and family. If you'll do that, you'll push me there faster. I'm right at a thousand. So I right now, I'm filling a movie, a large movie theater. My goal in this coming year 
is by this time next year to have over 100,000 subscribers. That means I'm filling Brian Denny Football Station, home of the tide. That's going to warm my heart. From there, I think I'll probably cap out at about a half a million. And at a half a million, I, I, I just can't con conceive that I've got a half a million people who know who I am, and I'm not a movie star, and I'm not a rock star, I'm just an old man with a lot of opinions. So, subscribe, ring the bell, stay with me, and share. Help me. I hope I'm helping you, so I'm going to ask you to help me. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful New Year. I don't know what my production's going to be in videos between now and then. Um, we have some activities for Christmas that I may let you in on, and, uh, and I may get some ideas before then. So have a lot of fun this Christmas, and love your family, particularly your children and grandchildren.